Jarvis, drop my needle. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to talk about the free comic book day Spider-Man and Venom comic that came out on Saturday, May 7th, uh, which is free comic book day, not that specific date every year, but usually the first Saturday of every May is free comic book day, and I highly, highly encourage you to go down to your local comic book store or a comic book store in your area or either the nearest one if you can, um, or you can, if you can't make it to a comic store, you can go on to Comixology about a week later, and Comixology gives these comics out for free on there too. But these books can be found for free, and there was other Marvel stuff that came out this year, like uh, Voices, Marvel Voices book, which has a bunch of short stories in it from various Marvel Voices comics, um, and then also a setup for the new event book that's coming out later this year, starring the Avengers, the X-Men, and the Eternals, called Judgment Day. Um, so I'm not here really to review any of these, uh, except for just talking about the Spider-Man Venom one, because that obviously pertains to Venom, and uh, and obviously that's what we talk about here on the channel. Although I haven't really dove into at all, actually, the new current run by Al Ewing and Rom V. I haven't read any of it yet. The first trade has come out, and maybe at some point I'll check it out when it you know goes on sale on Comixology or if it remains under 10 bucks on Comixology. Um, I think I'll pick it up and we can talk about it at some point. But uh, for now, I have no you know no plans to dive into it yet because we still have some older Venom stories I'm trying to get through that I've been promising for months and still haven't got to. So we're gonna work on that first. But this I just thought was neat because it's free and uh, you know I know a lot of you guys out there have a lot of opinions about this. And I wanted to hear them. So that's why I want to give you mine real quick. And then I want to hear yours down in the comments below. So if you've read this issue, um, and if you haven't, like I said, go over to Comixology. It's available for free on there now. Or still stop by a comic book store and maybe they still have uh, some left. Because we went to Acme Comics here in Orlando, Florida. And, uh, you know, my friend Nate and I, and he took me over there. Great store, amazing place. And they had a, a really wide selection. And we got there really late in the day. And they still had stacks of this Spider-Man Venom comic book. So hopefully a lot of other stores ordered big on it and, uh, and still have some copies. So call before you go. But if they don't have any, you can get it digitally as well. So this issue here kind of sets up two new arcs that are starting for both Spider-Man and Venom. In the first one, we kind of pick up after the Beyond storyline that was going on with uh, Spider-Man and Ben Riley. And I'll be honest with you, I was kind of into that run at first, and I was fully planning on making a video on it or reviews of it. Um, and then I just got, I fell way behind. The books were coming out way too frequently. And then I stopped being able to collect them due to money and stuff. So, uh, so I'm slowly catching back up now, and I will have a video on the whole arc in general, and I'm just gonna tie it into my history of Ben and Kane like videos that I'm doing. And we'll, so it won't be the next one, but it'll probably be the one or two after that. Uh, so we'll get back into making those history videos soon, and that way we can get caught up on Ben Riley because this seems to be setting up him as a, you know, upcoming villain for Spider-Man, uh, which I just don't like at all. <laughs> I just feel like Ben is such a great character, and he's someone that a lot of us have fond memories of because of what he went through during the Clone Saga, and uh, and in the end proving just how heroic he was. I mean, they wrote him really well throughout the Clone Saga, mainly because they wanted to make you think he was the real Spider-Man, and so because of that, they gave him less flaws than they gave Peter, and it just made him look more heroic. And then at the end, they decided to change their mind and make him the clone. But he died like, you know, where he was on top. Like all of us were like really rooting for him and loved him as Spider-Man for a while there. And uh, and it was kind of like frustrating when he when he passed. Um, at least that's some people's, you know, experience with the Clone Saga. Other people had did not have, you know, any good experience with the Clone Saga. But for me, I really liked Ben coming out of that. And ever since then, I've been following his, you know, career and, and path ever since he's been brought back, really hoping he would get back on a redemption arc. And right when they were doing it, finally, they decided to slip him back into, uh, you know, villain territory. And that's such a bummer. So this kind of sets it up. It starts off with this guy named Elroy going to, to drop off some mail uh, for, you know, I don't know if he works for the vet, you know, services or something like that. Uh, but he's going to drop off the mail and the mailbox comes to life and it wants to eat him and kill him. <laughs> and then Spider-Man shows up to take the mailbox down and beat it up uh, and save Elroy. Um, but it turns out uh, this mailbox is actually possessed by some kind of demon because it's like whispering things to Elroy, uh, talking talking to him and knowing about his personal life uh, to an extent because Elroy's been coming to this mailbox 
for like 20 years dropping off something that even his wife doesn't know about some kind of bill or something i don't know whatever they're but they're talking about how he's a man of of secrets uh, you know or to some extent <laughs> that's kind of like the why the mailbox has an interest in him or something or or the demon within the mailbox has an interest in him so spider-man comes saves the day and then a post office employee shows up and screams at spider-man because he just destroyed you know federal property <laughs> by destroying the mailbox um so spider-man quickly you know webs away and and that's when we reveal who's actually behind this. Um, and so that's when Ben is there with Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen. Now, I don't know too much about what they've been doing with X-Men uh, after Jonathan Hickman took over. I started off reading it in the beginning and quickly lost, uh, lost interest in the entire thing. And then anytime I went back to check in on it to see how, if it was getting better as Hickman slowly faded away and other writers were coming in, I still didn't like it. So I really just hate everything they're doing with X-Men. Maybe hate is a strong, strong word, but I just haven't really got pulled into it. And I know a lot of people out there do like it, um, but for me, it's just a big miss. I have not liked anything that I've peered in at during this whole saga of the X-Men. So I don't know what they're doing with Madeline Pryor now in the book, um, but in the original continuity, she was a clone of Jean Grey. So her and Ben here actually do have a lot in common. Uh, Ben's life got ripped away from him when he re you know, realized he was the clone and didn't get back home in time to see Mary Jane because he looked through the window and saw Peter reunited with her. And he realized, okay, I'm, I'm probably the clone. And he, you know, took, you know, tur he turned around and left New York and went and tried to start his own life out in uh, Salt Lake City. Um, but then Madeline Pryor though, she actually did integrate into Jean Grey's life. Everyone thought she was Jean Grey, but she was actually a clone made by Mr. Sinister. Uh, but she's also the mother of Cable. So uh, so she was in the X-Men long enough to actually fall, you know, fall in love with Cyclops, hook up with him, have a kid, and then that kid go on to be, you know, Cable from the X-Men. <laughs> so, uh, but now that she's, like I said, I don't know what the continuity is for her now, but either way, it looks like she's here and she has some kind of plan and Ben's on board. So they're gonna team up. So. I, you know, I don't like the idea of Ben being a villain, but I'm hoping that whatever they do with him in this new costume and these new powers that he has and stuff, I hope eventually he turns it back around. Although I'm getting really tired of that story because uh, it feels like every time they bring Ben back, he's a villain and then they you know mess with him for a while and then he's like, oh, maybe he will be a hero and then he falls back into villainhood. So I really hate that yo-yo of a story. He's definitely on his own hamster wheel again and uh, it's really frustrating. I don't really like it. So whatever this is, I hope they get through it fast. And the thing that sucks is I really like Zeb Wells and I was excited to see him back on Spider-Man, but I, I read the first issue of Amazing Spider-Man and I didn't really like it too much. It's like, oh, six months later and Mary Jane has kids and what happened? And Spider-Man pissed off the Fantastic Four and he has no friends and, you know, and Tombstone's back. And I was just like, ah, oh, the Tombstone thing is cool. I, I was into that part of the story, but everything else, I was like, I don't like this at all. Why do they do this? Peter was at the end of Nick Spencer's run was literally on the verge of reuniting with Mary Jane and moving in with her. And I was like, finally, after all these years of fans like screaming that this is what we want, we finally got it. And then it gets taken away instantly. And I know it's being taken away just so they can build it back up to give it to us later. But I'm just starting to feel like Marvel's never going to give us that relationship back. I just, I'm starting to really give up uh, all hope. So uh, just like I'm giving up hope that they'll ever do anything actually cool with Ben again. Um, so yeah, so anyway, that's the new story setting up and I probably won't read it, uh, at least not while it's coming out, but uh, maybe somewhere down the line when I want to conclude the story of Ben Riley or do another history of Ben Riley, I'll have to touch on this at some point. Um, but anyway, Dark Web, that's going to be a new story coming out from Zeb Wells and John Romita Jr. But the last half of this book, the main part for Venom fans is Lost in the, that was Lost in the Man was the first one, Seven Seas is the Venom story. And it's by uh, Ram V and Al Ewing and art by Stefano Raphael, who uh, artwork is actually uh, pretty good. Although it looks a little Brian Hitchish, a little bit, but just like a little toned down. Um, so, but I think that's what they were going for is someone with a similar style to kind of get the, the tone of the, the monthly book, which I think is by Brian Hitch. Um, and maybe Raphael does some of the art in the original, in the main book too. Uh, but this one, I guess Eddie Brock is dead. <laughs> I didn't know this, I don't think, or maybe one of you told me and I just forgot. Um, but yeah, Eddie Brock had his eye ripped out, it looks like, and he's in some void and he's walking through and, you know, someone's talking to him and, and uh, you know, uh, explaining what's going on. And he's uh, looking at visions of maybe where his son is or what could possibly come next. And his son, Dylan, is on Earth realizing that, you know, he's that his father's gone 
And but he's like, yeah, he's gone, but he's not. He's not dead. Gone. Uh, we can save him. He's you know somewhere out there in some kind of symbiote void or something. And, he, and he's like, so I need help. So he goes to his friend Normie, which I kind of like that. I'm like, hey, I like that relationship with them being friends and stuff. And he goes to Normie and he presents him with a symbiote, and it looks like a sliver of the Carnage symbiote mixed with uh, whatever Alchemex was working on, um, you know, to make like the anti-venom stuff. Uh, so I, I thought that was cool because, you know, anything with Alchemex, I really like that part uh, of those previous runs where Alchemex was, was part of the story. And so this is kind of neat that Venom takes that and he says, look, you know, you can bond again. And just because you're bonding with your symbiote again doesn't mean it has to be the same. Like last time you were the goblin child, you were evil, but this time doesn't mean you have to be. You can be in control. And that's what it looks like he gives him. He gives him, it, it kind of looks like the silence costume a little bit, but I think it is a carnage sliver. Um, Cause remember, I think he had, uh, you know, Dylan had that little sliver of the carnage suit for a while. So I don't know if he took that in and got it at Alchemex or if Alchemex had a sliver of the carnage symbiote from the extreme carnage storyline. I don't know exactly, but it does look like it, it blends. It's like black and red, kind of how the carnage symbiote was. Um, so yeah, anyway, so yeah, now the two of them are going out to see how they can either resurrect Eddie or find Eddie or whatever they're going to do, they're going to do it together. And so that's kind of fun, you know, maybe like a buddy cop, but with two kids, uh, that could be kind of interesting. And so, uh, so again, maybe one day down the line, I'll read this and start talking about these stories as we go into the third Venom movie, uh, when that starts going into production and stuff, because I'm sure I'll need some filler episodes, you know, between movie news for a while, because, you know, we go through that period every time a new Venom movie comes out, where it's like, really dead for a bit for for news although now we're past kind of the pandemic mostly hopefully news will come out a little bit faster and more steady like it did for the first movie um but anyway so yeah so uh, eddie is still talking to this omnipotent being whoever is speaking with him who reveals that there is a uh, <laughs> just a big symbiote battle possibly on the horizon i think meridian is that the name of the villain this guy, I think that's the one who killed Eddie. Again, I'm not reading the book, so I'm just guessing there. So if I'm wrong, feel free to fill me in down below. But this whole image just kind of made me kind of chuckle a little bit and, and roll my eyes. Because what do I always say when it comes to Venom stuff? It always comes down to, you know, the, the three like main stories that are always told. And it's all, one of them is always symbiote versus symbiote. It's always, you know, a plan of the symbiotes or a war of the symbiotes. It's always something like that. And this uh, does not change, you know, at all. This is just the typical uh, thing we always seem to get with these characters. And we just went through a big symbiote war with King and Black and all that stuff. And it just, it's that kind of escalation thing where some writers feel they have to escalate it. The last writer did this. So now we got to go bigger and we got to go, you know, above that. And for me, I feel like the best way to follow up a big, massive story like what Donny Cates did is do something more personal. And there is personal elements in this. You can tell with Dylan and his son, they're still you know, having those elements there. But this doesn't scream personal to me. Uh, this just seems like, hey, let's just get as many symbiotes battling as much as possible. But you see, I think that's Flash there is anti-venom. So you get to see that. You get Toxin in there. Uh, the, the kid, there's the, the new goblin child or the anti-child or whatever they want to call him, anti-goblin. Um, and then you got you know Venom. So uh, And then whoever this is, I actually don't know who that is. Someone... Uh, some like goth samurai with a necro sword, it looks like. Um, so I don't know if that's a character in the current book. So if so, let me know. Um, and then obviously Sleeper, who I'm a huge fan of. So that's cool. I mean, it's, you know, it's always neat to see an image like this on some level where it's a big, you know, symbiote war, but at the same time, it makes me kind of roll my eyes and go, oh, so they're just doing the same old, same old. They're just setting up for just another big conclusion that is just predictable in these situations. So uh, I don't know, but those are my thoughts. Still, um, I'm, you know, I'm not excited for Venom and I'm not really excited to read what they're gonna do with Ben. So this felt weird to me reading because I was like, oh man, none of this pumps me up for what's coming down the line for Spider-Man or Venom. And that's a shame because on this channel, definitely uh, that's been my life for the last five years is talking about things that are Spider-Man and Venom related, especially specifically Venom, obviously, but we do talk about Spidey at times as well. And we covered that whole Nick Spencer run, which I've really enjoyed for the most part. There was definitely some hiccups in it, in my opinion, but overall, I really enjoyed it. And I thought it recentered Peter at the end back to a point where I'm like, this is where I wanted Peter for years. I can't wait to see where they go with him. And then they just go in a direction that I just feel is, is such a waste of time on some level. Um, 
And then same with Venom. Like I feel like after Donny Cates, they're just like, hey, we got to pump it up. We got to go a step above somehow and introduce another big God villain and another. And it's like, oh man, like that's just not the way I would have probably gone. I would have probably gone the more the Mike Costa route where it was like smaller stories get kind of rail it in a little bit or rein it in a little bit where you have uh, you can still have Venom or Eddie be the God type character but show the more like, you know, human side of that uh, for the most part before you get to the big stuff. And it just seems like they're rushing to get to the big stuff again. And I'm not really into that. But maybe as we get closer to the Spider-Verse movies coming out as well and we get more Spider-Man content on this channel, um, we'll talk a lot about this guy, Spider-Man 2099, uh, definitely, because I picked this issue up and maybe that could be something fun we can talk about but only after I do like an origin of Spider-Man 2099 uh, video. So 2099 video. Um, it, yeah, it's the longest year ever in history of comics, 2099. Uh, so I don't know if they're like, <laughs> they're gonna set up for a 2100 at some point, but uh, man, a lot of things have happened in this one year in comic books. And so it's a lot to cover, but maybe I can do an overview video uh, series where we talk a little bit about Spidey 2099 leading into the new Spider-Verse movie. Cause it's a character I really, really love and now played by, uh, you know, someone who's becoming one of my favorite actors out there now, which is Oscar Isaac. He played Apocalypse, which is one of my favorite X-Men villains. Uh, he's played Moon Knight now, who is really, I just love that show so much. And then he's also doing the voice of Spidey 2099 in the upcoming movie. So yeah, I'm a big fan of the guy. So I think we're going to follow kind of his adventures and talk about some 2099 Spider-Man stuff coming up soon too. So that actually gets me excited. This stuff didn't so much, but uh, I didn't hate it. I just kind of was like, eh, all right, they're just doing the same old, same old uh, with Ben and Venom. It's just like a the hamster wheel thing. Uh, but now Venom's on a different hamster wheel where he deals with gods and big monsters and things and dies and gets resurrected. And I'm just kind of like, eh, I'm over it and wish they would just do something, I don't know, not so big. Uh, but then again, I haven't really read, to be fair, I haven't read the first trade. So for all I know, it has big moments, but also has smaller moments. And so I shouldn't really judge uh, based off just this. Uh, you know, obviously this is meant to be big and get you excited for what's to come. But for me, it, it just didn't. Uh, but if it did for you, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.